Okay, waiting for the notification. And it looks like we are live. Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Davey and it's Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be speaking about the Tough 20 Episode 3 show with the rematch between Jessica Penny and Lisa Ellis that's taking place tonight, Wednesday, September 24th on the Tough Show. On today's show, we have yours truly and my buddy Fred Kirby. Thanks for taking part in another show, Fred. I appreciate you taking time to be here and joining me to discuss the Tough 20 Episode 3 preview of the Jessica Penny and Lisa Ellis fight that's happening tonight. Go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening, buddy. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me, Rich. What's up, everybody? All right, let's quickly jump into this, and we'll make a real quick uh, show out of this here. Um, the Tough 20, Episode 3, Jessica Penny versus Lisa Ellis fight takes place tonight on Tough. And as usual, it will be on the Fox Sports 1 network starting at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And again, this is the rematch of a fight these two ladies had back at the Invicta FC1 event in 2012. And uh, I don't know if you saw that one or not, Fred, but damn, man, that was a good fight. Did you see that one? Yeah, I did. I actually uh, just recently rewatched it since uh, since I heard about this rematch. And, uh, yeah, fucking fantastic fight, right? Yeah, man, that was a great back-and-forth bout. I know you don't really care for the back-and-forth bout type <laughs> things, but, man, that was an exciting one. Um, unfortunately for Lisa Alice, she had you know a little bit of bad luck early on in that fight. And she suffered a blow to her right eye that, you know, put her at a bit of a disadvantage there. I don't know if that was stopping her from seeing uh, the punches coming in, you know, and, uh, you know, her taking the shots that she took and, you know, maybe having a hard time defending herself. But, you know, even after that, she was still, you know, doing fairly well in that fight there. Um, but you could tell that that injury, you know, to the eye was bothering her because she kept pawing at that eye during that. Um, in that event there, I don't know how you scored it, but I scored round one, 10 9 for Penny. I scored round two. 10-9 for Ellis, and the fight was really close, man, and even in the third round there, I actually had Ellis winning on the third round up until the point where that cut was opened up on her forehead there, and uh, she started bleeding like a stuck pig, man, and, you know, for those who haven't seen the fight, check it out. I mean, it wasn't quite as gruesome as, you know, some of the press and the media are making it out to be, but, yeah, it was a little bit of a bloody, uh, bloody fight there, so, um, you know, what did you think of those first two rounds, and, and, you know, who did you have winning that going into the third, and did you have you know, Penny winning it in the, th you know, leading in the third, or did you have Ellis leading in the third? Um, just like you, I gave uh, the first round the pin eight, <clears throat> and I gave the second round to Ellis, and uh, I thought that Ellis was doing really good, like you, just like you said, in the third round until that big blow landed. And uh, I, I just think that they made a big fuss about all the blood because it was uh, a female fight, you know, that's why I think it got so much hype, because it was a very bloody fight, actually. Yeah, typically you don't see the ladies get all bloodied up like that. I mean, every once in a while you see them get, you know, battered and bruised and bloody like that. But, uh, yeah, man, that was uh, that was pretty bloody for a woman's fight. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I thought that Lisa Ellis looked great in the fight, and I think that this rematch is fucking fantastic. It's, it should be a great fight, and uh, I'm totally stoked for it. Yeah, man, I agree with you. I, I also think it's going to be a great rematch there. Um yeah, but, you know, back to that fight there, how they were doing there, um, like I mentioned, you know, between that issue, you know, with the eye that she had there, because she had a pretty big knot on her eye there that you could tell was swelling and closing the eye, and, you know, she you know, she must have been having a hard time seeing out of that, because initially, when the doctors went over and looked at her, the eye was almost, you know, closed totally, um, but, you know, in between uh, one and two there, it looks like they put some ice on that, and that brought the swelling down a little bit, and, uh, you know, like I said, she came back in the second round there, and she seemed to, you know, win round two, in my opinion there. Um, but, you know, that, that bit of misfortune, you know, I'm going to think that combined, you know, with all the blood streaming out of her head in the third there, um, after she started looking to me like she was winning the third round there, um, I think that cost her the fight here. And then, you know, shortly after that cut was opened up and the blood was streaming and all over the place, um, I think it kind of took the heart out of... Uh, Lisa Ellis there, and she, you know, pretty much resigned herself to the fact that she wasn't going to get the win, and then, uh, you know, Jessica Penny, uh, you know, got the TKO stoppage when she was just, you know, raining down punches on her from behind, uh, when she was basically, you know, on her back there, and just, you know, hammering her shot after shot, but, you know, the ref did jump in and stop it, you know, I don't know if it was quickly, but he jumped in, you know, fairly soon when he saw the battering that she was taking, but, 
maybe he was feeling the same thing that probably some of the fans were thinking, and like I was thinking as well there, that, uh, you know, it looked like maybe Lisa Ellis had given in and, you know, pretty much conceded to the fact that she wasn't going to be able to, you know, overcome the eye injury and, and all that blood that was pouring out. But, you know, I think if it wasn't for, you know, those two unfortunate injuries, I, I think maybe the ending of that matchup might have been a little different to, uh, differently there because, like I said, I had her winning round three, and she would have won the fight if, uh, you know, maybe that cut didn't open up the way that it did. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, definitely getting your eye uh, injured early in the fight like that's not going to help nothing. Um, you know, it's going to hinder you being able to see the strikes coming, and it's definitely going to cost you. And as far as the cut goes, I think that definitely has a lot to do with it. If a fighter's never really been, you know, cut very badly or opened up like that in a fight, I think that a fighter can totally panic um, the first time they sustain a cut like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that wouldn't surprise me at all <clears throat> if that was the case with her. She just kind of panicked when she uh, saw all that blood. Yeah, I don't know. You know, after that fight there, she took some time off. And uh, I read a couple of articles out there, and they said it was you know, due to the fact that she wanted to start a family. She had a child. And then I was reading some articles that said she hasn't fought since the Jessica Penny fight that she lost, um, but she actually did. She came back and had another fight after that, and she won that fight. Uh, I'm going to guess, and I'm not really sure, I'm going to guess that was probably after she had the baby. I don't know if you're familiar with her record or, you know, you've seen anything or any of the news about, you know, her taking time off and starting a family or not. Yeah, I actually had heard that. That's what they were saying, that um, <clears throat> it was her last fight since then. But then when I was looking around, too, it looked like she had a fight in July, I think, actually. Yeah, 20, 2012, wasn't it? it? Well, wait a minute. I don't think so. No, yeah, it was uh, July 14th, 2000. Or no, you're right. Okay, that was 2012. At least that's what it says here, yeah. And what was the that was the Penny the Penny fight was in uh, January, wasn't it? Uh, it says April. April? April 28, 2012, yeah. Oh, so then it must have been after the other fight when she came back after she lost and took a fight. Yeah, I wonder why they were promoting it like that there. That's kind of odd. So apparently mm -hmm. looking at those two dates there, it must have been after that last fight that she had where she took the time off. <clears throat> I would assume so, yeah. I mean, if she had a baby in the meantime, for sure. Yeah. Well... I don't know. I, you know, what do you, what do you think about this one here? I agree with you there. I think this is going to be just as, as exciting as the first fight. But, you know, um, what do you think on this one here? How do you think it's going to unfold and everything like that? You know, it's almost one of those issues where I'm kind of nervous because the first fight was so fucking good. It seems like every time you have a really good fight and you try to recapture that magic, it's never quite the same again. Um, that being said, I hope this one turns out to be the same and it turns out to be a fantastic fight like the first one. I am half tempted to pick Lisa Ellis because, like you said, I thought she actually was doing really well in that fight. And bar a couple of, uh, you know, sneaky little problems that caught up on her, I think that she could still do very well in this fight. Although I do think that Jessica Penne is going to be the favorite going into it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go with Lisa Ellis. I'm going to go ahead and say that um, she gets it together this time and puts her game together and has a complete performance in this fight. You know, man, in my preview and writing the show up here, I was thinking exactly the same way as you. And then when I went back and I looked at how long she's, you know, been off now, um, you know, it gave me pause here, and then I'm starting to rethink things here. But just for the listeners who don't know here, um, coming into this fight here, Jessica Penny is uh, 11 and 2. Uh, she's 31 years old, and she was ranked number four in episode one of the show. Um, as far as I guess that's going to be the UFC rankings go, until the press actually gets to you know vote on the strawweight division rankings for the women. Um, and coming into this one here, Lisa Ellis has uh, 15 wins and eight losses. She is also 31 years old, I believe. And um, she's ranked number 13 in episode one of the show. So, you know, I, I really feel a lot like you do, Fred. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a great fight. I think it's probably going to be just as exciting as the first fight because those two ladies were all over on the ground there, man. And that was really interesting to watch. 
Um, you know, because I know there are some ladies that actually are great like that, and then you look at some ladies who aren't too good on the ground, and then, you know, you also have the ladies that can strike and then the ladies that can't. Then you have ladies who just, you know, are great at, you know, all things around. And, uh, man, these two ladies were striking and they were grappling and they were, you know, trying for submissions on the ground. It was really a great fight, man. So, you know, for those of you, that, you know, that might have missed that first fight, go out and check it again. Uh, you know, just, you know, do a search for it on the Internet there and it will come up because it's um, all over the Internet if you want to watch it. A great fight. Um, and I, like Fred, I wanted to pick the younger dog to win this time around also because of what we were speaking about earlier there. And, you know, I also like to root for the underdog. That's kind of like my thing. But, uh, like I mentioned there, just right after Fred made his comments, um, I don't know, Lisa Ellis hasn't fought since July of 2012 there. And, uh, I don't know, that's almost like two years ago, you know, by the time that this fight actually takes place. So, I don't know, man. I really want to go with Lisa Ellis, you know, on the rematch here. But, you know, Panay is a tough character, man. And, uh, I don't know. I find it kind of hard to go against her. Um, I don't know if you saw that fight with Michelle Watterson where she lost her title to Michelle Watterson. Did you see that fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she's a tough broad. Or, or, yeah. or, I guess I shouldn't say that. She's a tough fighter. <laughs> yeah, very much so. I think that <clears throat> Jessica Penne is definitely the favorite in this fight, for sure. And for good reason. I mean, she's got a better record. She's got more notable wins. She definitely should be the favorite in this fight. And the fact that, you know, Lisa Ellis hasn't fought for close to two years definitely could be a major issue to do. But like you said, watching that first fight and, and seeing that fight and thinking about how maybe it unfolds without the unfortunate things that happened, you know, the, this fight could go completely differently. Um, I mean, I, like I, hope, I hope it does go that way, you know, but, you know, two years off, you know, and again, she's going to probably, you know, and this may play in, you know, into a factor of things, and it may not, but, you know, you think maybe the fact that she was all, you know, battered and bruised and bloody at the end of that fight, that might have some sort of, like, mental, you know, impact on her, in addition to the long layoff? What do you think? I mean, anything's possible. I suppose that could definitely happen. Um, I would think not, though. This is a different fight. It's a different time. A lot more is on the line. I would think that Lisa Ellis could just, you know, picture it like that first fight didn't happen. She's back. You know, there's there's two ways of looking at it. One, she could come back extremely rusty, and this time off could have hurt her horribly. Or she could have used this time off to really rejuvenate, get her shit together, get her body back running right, and uh, maybe she'll come out firing on all cylinders. It's, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think actually... You know, I, you know, I'm going to be rooting for Lisa Ellis, but I'm going to be picking uh, Jessica Penny to win this one here. I, I think it'll probably go to a, a decision as long as you know Lisa doesn't get you know battered or bruised early on. But I also think it, you know it could unfold like you're saying there if she comes out you know gangbusters in round one and you know you know does the damage first and uh, you know gains her confidence back there and, and you know takes control right off the bat in round one there. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe she could win if she wins, wins round one and two and she can survive round three. Um, yeah, I could see it going to her, but I, I think it's going to go to decision. What do you think? Ah, it's so hard to tell. It, just judging on the preview that's floating around right now, it looks like somebody gets finished. I mean, from judging from what Dana White says on the little preview, it looks like somebody wants a way out and they find one, Jack. So I think that it looks like a finish happens. But... Also, I would like to add, who knows how much the coaches are affecting these girls right now, too, you know? Who knows exactly whose methods are a little better and which one of the girls will be a bit more fresher. It seems like uh, the girls on Pettis' team, I think it was, was complaining. Uh, they didn't really like, they felt like they were getting drilled a little hard or something. So who knows, man? Maybe that'll kind of uh, play into things, too. Yeah, it was actually Jessica Penny who was actually complaining about that, where she said, you know, I can't do anything wrong. I mean, I can't do anything right. They were, they were stopping her, and, you know, she's, you know, she was kind of saying, well, come on, you know, I, you know, I've been a champ before. I, you know, I can't be wrong on everything. <laughs> well, Ryan, I think that uh, uh, that kind of uh, team gelling together with the coaches and shit matters a lot. In general, it matters a lot, but certainly on something like the Ultimate Fighter with the reality show being in the house, I think they really need to be fucking on page with their coaches to have good performances and 
house because I think everybody knows that people come on the Ultimate Fighter, man, and sometimes it's not, they don't perform to the best of their abilities. Maybe it's the cameras or the weird audience while they're fighting, but sometimes the Ultimate Fighter makes fighters fight in an odd way. So it's really difficult to say how they're going to handle this pressure and come into this fight. Yeah, so um, you don't really have a comment as to how it's going to end? You don't think it's going to be a finish or a decision? Or? Um, I, yeah, I do think it'll be a finish, and I guess since I'm going with Lisa Ellis, I'm going to have to pick Lisa Ellis by finish. Um, I'll say it goes to round two. At some point in the second round, she will get a submission. Oh, wow, awesome. I like that pick, man. That's bold. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with Jessica Penny by uh, decision there. Um you know, I hope you're right and I'm wrong. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you made a comment there about somebody looking for a way out here. Any more comments on that matchup there or anything else on that fight? Uh, no, I think that should do it. Um, like I said, it should be a great fight. It's a rematch. Um, sometimes I'm a little skeptical about rematches that were really good the first time around, but because there's so much on the line, I think that there's no way this isn't a good fight. And uh, I'm predicting a finish, man. It should be a Great fight. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, yeah, I hope you're right, and I think, yeah, it's going to be a great fight. It should be just as exciting there, but uh, I did want to talk about a couple of other things that they're teasing for the show, and being that you made that comment that, you know, somebody is looking for a way out, I wasn't really sure if that actually had to do, because I can't recall the preview that you're uh, referencing there with DFW, um, but... Um, the teasers and the things that I've been reading and seeing about this week's episode here is um, they're actually teasing um, some sort of issue with Beck Rawlings where apparently she's going to receive some sort of bad news this week. And uh, it's also being teased that she's going to have to make a decision as to whether or not she wants to stay in the tough house or leave because of whatever that bad news is that she receives. I'm going to guess, you know, typically when something like that happens, it's it's got something to do with a family member. Um, and, uh, you know, she, she's from Australia, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's Australian. Yeah, so, I mean, if it has something to do with a family member and she has to fly back to Australia, I mean, typically, you know, for things like that, they'll let, you know, the fighters come back to the show. If, you know, we've seen it before in the past where, you know, if the you know mother, father, you know, family member... You know, has some sort of medical issue or passes away or something. They give the fighter that time to actually leave the tough house, go out, visit the family, and come back and you know rejoin things, um, which is you know very nice of them to do. But the way that they're teasing this one here, it, they're kind of making it sound like you know she's got a decision to make there: do I stay or do I go? And uh, I don't know. Have you heard anything about that? Uh, actually, I have. I don't know whether it's true or not. I, I didn't hear it from any kind of reliable source. I think I just read something on Twitter earlier, but I heard something along the lines that possibly it was her stepfather that something had happened to. So the only thing, because like you said, they have made exceptions before in the past, and usually if they bring you some kind of news on The Ultimate Fighter, it's usually something pretty important and pretty you know, bad. So... Yeah. I'm assuming, let's say, maybe something happens to her stepfather, and there's a you know a loophole rule where it has to be a, a, an actual family member in order for you to get off of the show or get in there too off. So maybe that's the, the long term that she's put in where something bad's happened, but because it's a step sibling, she's not actually allowed to leave the show. Yeah. Or you know, not, not and, and come back. Obviously, she can leave if she chooses to. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think even if it is a stepfather, they'll, you know, allow her to come back if she has to leave. But, yeah, who knows? I mean, we're just speculating here at this point. But we have seen in the past, you know, as I mentioned a minute ago there, that if, you know, a parent passes away, um, they allow the fighter the time off to go visit the family and, you know, attend the funeral. And then they allow them back. But then again, we've also seen, you know, guys on the show who were, you know, pissing and, mining, uh, <laughs> pissing and whining, moaning about missing their girlfriend and shit like that. And there was one fighter, I believe, in one season where he was worried about his woman cheating on him while he was there in the house. And uh, I believe that guy wound up leaving the show just to go back to his woman. And I think she did eventually wind up leaving him. I don't know if you recall that or not. but You know what? No, actually, I, I do recall that. I don't recall the fighter's name, but here recently I actually heard contrary. I heard that uh, they are still together and, and that it worked out. Oh, really? So I, 
Yeah, yeah, and it's funny. I actually just read something about that not too long ago, a few months ago. I, I, I forget what the kid's name was, but yeah, yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, typically in my experience there, if you're worried about somebody cheating on you or somebody has cheated on you in the past, that's pretty much their makeup. And uh, if somebody you know has a problem with fidelity and they're you know you're not going to be faithful to you, you know when you're there, they're not going to be faithful to you when you're not there. So. You know, and conversely, the same thing. If you're not around and they're going to cheat on you, they'll cheat on you when you are around. So, yeah, kind of funny. I mean, I, you know, it, it's difficult when you see people in relationships like that. Uh, you know, you wonder how, how do people stay together like that, living with that kind of fear and insecurity if, you know, somebody's going to constantly cheat on you. You know, I mean, I've had, I've had women that have been unfaithful to me and I've given them second chances. And, uh, you know, it's just who people are. If they're going to cheat on you, that's who they are. They're going to cheat on you. It doesn't matter how much they say they love you or not. You know. Yeah. Well, one thing's for sure. You fucking, you know, going home and being stuck up her ass isn't going to change anything. They're either going to do it or they're not. You, you putting them under your thumb constantly surely isn't going to uh, do the trick of making them not want to cheat on you. That's yeah. not the issue. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's the individual. It's their character and their makeup. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and one other thing, I, you know, let's wish uh, Beck Rollins well. Let's hope it's not something too bad. I hope it's, you know, nothing real serious with her, or her family member, stepfather, or whatever it might be there. But, you know, I hope she does, in fact, you know, attend to whatever she has to attend to there with that bad news and that, you know, she can remain on the show there. Because, uh, you know, again, we won't know anything until actually the show airs. But, uh, wishing Beck Rawlings and her family members well. I hope all is, you know, turns out okay for them. Yeah, absolutely the same. I hope everything's great, and I hope that she doesn't have to leave the show, man. You know, uh, DW always says about how this is the opportunity of a lifetime, but with this season, it, it truly is the opportunity of a lifetime. You're going to be the inaugural fucking champion for the UFC. It's a major, major deal. I hope she doesn't have to go. That would suck, man. Yeah, me too. And even if she does go and she loses the show, it doesn't matter because she'll still have the UFC contract. You know, I'm, I'm sure they won't hold that against her if, you know, it was a family issue and she had to leave the show because I believe she was one of the ladies that actually uh, were signed up um, to the UFC. I believe there were like 16 ladies that were signed from Invicta that um, actually were signed, you know, to the UFC from Invicta. So... I think she's going to be one of those ladies, regardless of what happens here, because she's really, you know, a tough fighter. And uh, I think no matter what happens with this issue here on Tough Tonight, um, regardless, she'll still be a UFC fighter. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I think most of these ladies are, are going to end up getting the call to the UFC. But the thing is, there's one reason why we're all tuning in and why they're all in the house. There can be only one first ever strawweight UFC women's champion. So... Mm -hmm. You know that would suck to get that opportunity. Of course, she'll she'll get another opportunity to compete. Absolutely, but this is for all the marbles, man. This is a big one, and it would suck to this opportunity to get swept away by something bad like this. Yeah, yeah. I don't like I said there. It would be awful if she didn't get to you know compete in the rest of the tournament to you know try and win the title there. But uh, no matter what happens, she'll still be a UFC fighter. All right, one more thing I wanted to talk about here that they're teasing about the show this week here, and a couple of ladies seem to be mentioning things. I'm going to guess that it probably has something to do with Felice Herrig, um, but I could be wrong on that, but I did see Felice post a couple of things. I follow her on a couple of different social networking um, sites, um, and she posted something about, don't talk to me, you know, you know, she's wearing a shirt which says, don't, just don't talk to me or something like that. Um, but from what I'm reading there, um, due to the boredom of living in the tough house, there's apparently going to be some sort of game that takes place on episode three um, that is apparently going to have lasting implications that resonate through the rest of the season. Have you read anything about that or heard anything about that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember what I read or what I heard. I heard somewhere that it's, uh, they just do something like, uh, I don't know whether it's a game or whether they're just shooting the shit, but I heard somebody says something like, uh, what coach would you rather bang the most or something oh, like fuck. that? <laughs> Which one of the coaches? <clears throat> I think it's something like that, yeah. Um, that's what I heard now at least, so. Wow. And it's, it's something like, well, that's kind of the question that's posed. I, I would suppose one of the girls poses that question to the girls in the house. And I'm assuming that some of them probably play into it and some of them probably get rather offended by it. And it probably 
draws the divide in the house in some kind of way, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, I didn't know anything like that. I'm glad you brought that up because that gives us a moment to talk about something about that. Um, I don't know if you've ever been privy to sitting in, you know, on a conversation where women are speaking blatantly like that. But it's funny because, you know, a lot of people seem to think that men are, you know, pretty hardcore and raunchy and, um, <laughs> you know, talk about sex and, and things like that, about the women that they've had sex with and their sexual encounters. But in my experience, man, I've actually, you know, been fortunate enough to kind of like sit in in a conversation and hear women talk. And um, women are actually way worse than men when it comes to talking about sexual escapades and you know, sexual, you know, encounters that they've had. I don't know if you've ever been privy to a situation like that, but, you know, what have you, in your experience, found out? Do you do you think that women are actually a little more raunchy when it comes to talking about sexual escapades and their encounters? Or do you think that men are? I, I don't know if I would say more raunchy, but I would say just as raunchy. Certainly when they're amongst other women and they feel safe enough to actually let it all out, you know what I'm saying? I think that most people just don't assume that women are like that or that they're, you know, talking about their sexual history or past and shit like that. But, uh, yeah, for sure, I would think that they they absolutely do, certainly amongst other women and shit like that. That's, you know, it's kind of their thing, right? I don't know. Have you ever had the opportunity to hear women actually speaking when they think that they're just with women? <laughs> Well, <laughs> no, I've never had that unique ability. Usually, Trust they me, man. Right. you know how it is when you talk to your buddies about you know when you were younger and you know coming up and you know some of the women and girls that you might have been with when you were a younger man. Um, I don't know, man. The guys that I've spoken to have never spoken the way that women do. I mean, they they get down to the nitty gritty, man. I'll tell you. They can definitely be very truthful. Let's just say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it'll be interesting to see there. I mean, yeah, because uh, you know everyone seems to be teasing Felice Herrig here about uh, her her crush on uh, I guess it's Sergio Pettis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I think that there's going to be a little bit of blowback from this. It seems like everybody's getting their fucking panties in a wad with everything about this season, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there that think that the the lady shouldn't be speaking like this. That it's going to be kind of cheapening the show or cheapening them or whatever, but I I think it's all good fun. You know, it's a fucking reality show. Like I always say, as long as they get in there and they fight at the end of the day, all this other shit is just extra. It's fun. You know, fuck it. Why not? Who cares? I mean, if they want to fucking say who they're more attracted to, if, if Felice Herring's got a fucking crush on Sergio Pettis, it's good, right? It's something to fucking talk about. It keeps shit interesting. And I don't, I don't think that it cheapens them as martial artists in any way. They're fucking people, you know what I'm saying? It just makes them seem normal and relatable. They're just, you know, talking amongst themselves. They've got no fucking TV or no internet. Of course they're going to say shit like that. It makes perfect sense, really. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole thing with the panty party that went on, we got some grief from that, um, where we actually spoke about that, and uh, I had some people actually unfollow me because of that. But, you know, hey, man, we're just relaying, you know, what goes on during the show, and, you know, sometimes we have, you know, opinions that people aren't going to agree with, but, you know, there's no reason to hate for that. We're just, you know, being honest and being adults and speaking about things the way that they happen. I personally didn't really have a problem with, you know, police dropping her drawers the way that she did on the show. I was just a little surprised that she would do it on camera like that, you know? Yeah, well, who gives a fuck? I mean, for me, I don't, I mean, you know, who cares? Like I said, when she gets in that ring, if she takes shit seriously, she's training hard and she's there to fight, who cares that she took her panty? Like, you know, I don't know. People get all butthurt over it. I don't see the, I really don't see the, the point in caring all that much. They're there to fight, and as long as they do that, the rest of the shit is a reality show. Let's not kid ourselves. It's on TV, you know. Some of these last couple seasons of The Ultimate Fighter have kind of fucking sucked. So... Yeah, keep it interesting. Make me want to tune in, man. Like, keep the fights good and keep the other shit going on, and it's it's fun. I don't think there's no issue with it at all, really. Okay, any other comments about anything that we spoke about before I mention that one last thing I want to mention? No, sir, that does it, man. I, I'm fucking stoked. I can't wait for it.
Okay, yeah, me too. I can't wait to see the episode tonight. All right, and I just want to let everybody know um, that MMA Chat is going to be interviewing Randa Marcos um, within the next couple of days here. I'm not quite sure of the day yet because we're still, uh, you know, trying to coordinate things on that. Uh, but if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Randa Marcos, um, we will be interviewing her, and it will be on the MMA Live Roundtable Discussion Show. Um, that'll be streaming live on YouTube when we do, in fact, do it. I'll post notifications on Facebook and Twitter when we're going to be doing that. So if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask Randa Marcos, um, go ahead and follow the link in the video to our site, and you can start an account there and pose your questions to Randa Marcos and we will do our best to um, have Randa ask, answer those questions. Okay, Bud, you're, I guess, going to be doing that interview with me, correct? Yes, sir, I'm in. Okay, it'll be Fred and I doing that interview with Randa Marcos. So, again, uh, get your questions in. You still have time. Not sure when that's going to be, but uh, it's going to be probably within the next couple of days. All right, buddy. Appreciate you showing up here and doing this preview show with me. Uh, can't wait to see the show tonight. I think it's going to be a great fight, and uh, we will do it again next time, bro. All right, man. That sounds good. I will see you next time. I am stoked for the fights tonight, too, and I'm super stoked for that Random Marcos interview. Yeah, great. me too. Me too, man. I was rooting for her. Were you rooting for her in the first fight there? Yeah, like you said, I always root for the underdogs. I'm, I'm rooting for uh, Angela Hill. I'm, I'll, I'd love to see her almost take it all, the 16 seed, right? That's and what she, she certainly me. does not. Yeah, she certainly does not look like she should be ranked number sixteen. Not at all. She looks fucking great. I actually just followed her on Twitter today. So yeah, absolutely. I was rooting for her. I'm rooting for all the underdogs. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm that. I'm that same way. Yep. So uh, good luck to all the ladies there. And uh, you know, again, uh, maybe Lisa Ellis will be fortunate enough to, uh, you know, get the rematch and uh, win the rematch here. So um, good luck, Linda Ellis. I'm rooting for you, but I am going to be picking Jessica Penny to win this one, but I hope I'm wrong. All right, let's go. I got Lisa Ellis. Good luck, everybody. Let's do it. All righty, bro. We'll see you next time. All right, brother. Later. All right, bye-bye. Fairly well in that fight there, um, but you could tell that that injury you know, to the eye was bothering her because she kept pawing at that eye during that. Um, in that event there, I don't know how you scored it, but I scored round one, 10-9 for Penny. I scored round two, 10-9 for Ellis. And the fight was really close, man. And even in the third round there, I actually had Ellis winning on the third round up until the point where that cut was opened up on her forehead there. And uh, she started bleeding like a stuck pig, man. And, you know, for those who haven't seen the fight, check it out. I mean, it wasn't quite as gruesome as, you know, some of the press and the media are making it out to be. But, yeah, it was a little bit of a bloody, a bloody fight there. So, um, you know, what did you think of those first two rounds? And, and, you know, who did you have winning that going into the third? And did you have, you know, Penny winning it in the, th you know, leading in the third? Or did you have Ellis leading in the third? Um, just like you, I gave uh, the first round the pin eight. <clears throat> and I gave the second round to Ellis. And uh, I thought that Ellis was doing really good, like you, just like you said, in the third round until that big blow landed. And uh, I, I just think that they made a big fuss about all the blood because it was uh, a uh, female fight. You know, that's why I think it got so much hype because it was a very bloody fight, actually. Yeah, typically you don't see the ladies get all bloodied up like that. I mean, every once in a while you see them get, you know, battered and bruised and bloody like that. But, uh, yeah, man, that was, uh, that was pretty bloody for a woman's fight. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I thought that Lisa Ellis looked great in the fight, and I think that this rematch is fucking fantastic. It's, it should be a great fight, and uh, I'm totally stoked for it. Yeah, man, I agree with you. I, I also think it's going to be a great rematch there. Um, yeah, but, you know, back to that fight there, how they were doing there, um, like I mentioned, you know, between that issue, you know, with the eye that she had there, because she had a pretty big knot on her eye there that you could tell was swelling and closing the eye, and, you know, she, you know, she must have been having a hard time seeing out of that, because initially... When the doctors will be Jessica Penny versus Lisa Ellis fight takes place tonight on Tough. And as usual, it will be on the Fox Sports 1 network starting at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And again, this is the rematch of a fight these two ladies had back at the Invicta FC1 event in 2012. And uh, I don't know if you saw that one or not, Fred, but damn, man, that was a good fight. Did you see that one? Yeah, I did. I actually uh, just recently rewatched it since... Uh 
since I heard about this rematch. And uh, yeah, fucking fantastic fight, right? Yeah, man, that was a great back and forth bout. I know you don't really care for the back and forth bout type <laughs> things, but man, that was an exciting one. Um, unfortunately for Lisa Alice, she had you know a little bit of bad luck early on in that fight, and she suffered a blow to her right eye that you know put her at a bit of a disadvantage there. I don't know if that was stopping her from seeing. Uh, the punches coming in, you know, and, uh, you know, her taking the shots that she took and, you know, maybe having a hard time defending herself. But, you know, even after that, she was still, you know, doing... Okay, waiting for the notification. And it looks like we are live. Hello, and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Davey, and it's Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be speaking about the Tough 20 Episode 3 show with the rematch between Jessica Penny and Lisa Ellis that's taking place tonight, Wednesday, September 24th on the Tough Show. On today's show, we have yours truly and my buddy Fred Kirby. Thanks for taking part in another show, Fred. I appreciate you taking time to be here and joining me to discuss the Tough 20 Episode 3 preview of the Jessica Penny and Lisa Ellis fight that's happening tonight. Go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening, buddy. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me, Rich. What's up, everybody? All right, let's quickly jump into this, and we'll make a real quick uh, show out of this here. Um, the Tough 20, Episode 3, went over and looked at her. The eye was almost, you know, closed totally. Um, but, you know, in between uh, 1 and 2 there, it looks like they put some ice on that, and that brought the swelling down a little bit. And, uh, you know, like I said, she came back in the second round there, and she seemed to, you know, win round 2, in, in my opinion there. Um, but, you know, that, that bit of misfortune, you know, I'm going to think that combined, you know, with all the blood streaming out of her head in the third there, um, after she started looking to me like she was winning the third round there, um, I think that cost her the fight here. And then, you know, shortly after that cut was opened up and the blood was streaming and all over the place, um, I think it kind of took the heart out of uh, Lisa Ellis there. And she, you know, pretty much resigned herself to the fact that she wasn't going to get the win. And then... Uh, you know, Jessica Penny, uh, you know, got the TKO stoppage when she was just, you know, raining down punches on her from behind uh, when she was basically, you know, on her back there and just, you know, hammering with shot after shot. But, you know, the ref did jump in. 